This was a big moment. This was the moment almost anyone could start investing in startups. Well, sort of. Let's rewind it and give you a little bit of the backstory before we jump into this exact moment. If you don't know me, I'm Matt Garda. I'm the founder of StartStation, where we help innovation start on the right track and regulation crowdfunding can be a part of that. Historically, there's been two main pathways to get funding for a new business, and it really depends on what type of business you have. So if you have a small business, historically, you try to go, go through your local bank and get a bank loan. And if you were a high growth startup, you would try to get funding through angel investors or venture capitalists or VCs. Now, there's a few different problems. One is that when 2008 happened, a lot of the bank loans dried up because banks became less risky. And honestly, it's, there's a lot of good reasons for that. Now, for the angel investors and venture capitalists, one, you need to know them because investing is such a personal thing. And the other big hurdle is that to be an angel investor or a VC, you needed to be what is called an accredited investor. And there's a lot of different ways to describe that, but it's essentially a person with a net worth of over $1 million. So if you traditionally, historically, if you didn't have a net worth of over a million dollars, you weren't able to invest in a high growth, high, high risky startup. Now, there's been good reasons for this, and it's to really help the middle class and the lower class and help protect them a little bit because these startups, a lot of startups go to zero. So if you invested $20,000, that can all go down to zero because high growth startups are typically zero or a billion dollars. There's very little middle ground typically. So historically, if you were a startup with high growth potential, you would raise under regulation D or reg D with only accredited investors. Now this was okay when the successful ones, they would IPO and there would still be a lot of value creation available to the public or to the more unaccredited investors. Now, what's been happening though in the last couple decades is that that value creation has been largely pre-IPO and only been with accredited investors. It's the classic case of the rich getting richer. So, thankfully, Congress passed the Jobs Act in 2012 to help alleviate that and allow unaccredited investors to be able to invest easier through what they call regulation crowdfunding or Reg CF. Now, Reg CF has been a game changer for startups and for small businesses. So that's why we're gonna cover it in this video in much more in depth so you can understand what equity crowdfunding is. Now, as I mentioned, Congress passed the Jobs Act in 2012. However, Reg CF didn't get into play until May of 2016 because the SEC had to actually get those regulations going. So in May 2016, it was a big moment for investors and for startups. It was the first time that unincredited investors could invest in startups up to a percentage of their net income through regulated portals such as WeFunder or StartEngine. And then for startups, they could go approach unincredited investors and even market towards them through like Facebook ads or just publicly solicit for them. And this increased the number of investors that could potentially invest in them. However, even with all of those benefits as it for startups and investors, equity crowdfunding got off to a slow start. And there's three main reasons for this. One, VCs, venture capitalists, and angel investors were really confused and what to do with equity crowdfunding and even looked at equity crowdfunding as the place where the startups where they don't want to fund or that just aren't good enough to fund would go to get funding because unincredited investors, this is their first time investing and they might not be well educated in how to invest. So a lot of the accredited investors didn't see equity crowdfunding as a viable funding option for a lot of their good startups. So if you did fundraise with equity crowdfunding or were, you were in a disadvantage to invest or to raise money with accredited investors, you know, while you were fundraising with equity crowdfunding or even afterwards. So if you raised a seed round as a startup company, you're getting your series A or series B might be a little bit trickier. Reason number two is that all these investors, yes, every single investor, even if they invested a little bit as a hundred dollars, they were on your cap table and had voting rights. So that means even if you're going to sell your company, all those investors essentially have to sign off on it. That's a big disadvantage and 
quite annoying from a founder standpoint, especially if you're gonna do future fundraises or whatnot. Reason number three is that yes, unaccredited investors could finally invest starting in May of 2016. However, there weren't that many of them because a lot of people didn't know they could finally invest through these portals such as WeFunder or Start Engine. So as a founder, you were doing a lot of educating and you had to get a lot of volume to get those smaller check sizes. So if you compare that to getting maybe the bigger checks with, that you'll get with accredited investors, it's a lot like B2B or B2C sales. You can get bigger checks but smaller amount of customers, or you can go with high volume with B2C and get smaller check sizes. And for a lot of founders, the preference was to take this enterprise model or the accredited investors still, because that might have been the same amount of effort or even less effort to get your fundraise done. So that's how equity crowdfunding got started in 2016, specifically around Reg CF. Now let's fast forward to 2021, where things are drastically different in a positive way. One, the amount of investors is significantly higher because there's been more companies and a lot more unaccredited investors know and are much more comfortable investing through Reg CF. Reason number two is that a lot of the B2C and local small businesses have realized this is a really powerful tool for them to keep customers around. So for example, let's say you are a local brewery and you wanna raise a little bit of capital. Well, you can raise a round through a funder, raise up to a million dollars for you know that capital, for you, maybe it's expansion of the building, maybe a new location, whatever it might be. And you can allow your customers to become investors. Now, one, it's a sitting investor pool and you don't have to necessarily go meet accredited investors that you might not know, so that's one advantage. But probably the biggest advantage that I think that comes with it is that your customers, they become a, an investor, which means that they are loyal to what you're doing and want to be part of it. And are, they become these big influencers for you because if they keep coming in, they increase the amount of their investment as well. So it's a win win for customers and for the business. And it keeps customer engagement really high because they feel like they are a part of it and it creates a really big community even stronger community within your local business. All right, the reason number three though, why it's drastically different in 2021, is that the SEC amended the rules from the original Reg CF regulations and really fixed all the different issues that come with Reg CF. So let's dive into what those amended rules are and how they've impacted Reg CF drastically in 2021. So there's three main rule changes that the SEC made. The first one is that they raised the cap of the, how much you can raise in 12 months from a million dollars to $5 million. So that means pretty much everyone's seed round could fit within that, which is awesome because if you're a high growth startup, specifically in like a hardware startup, a million dollars is about half of what you need. Typically for a hardware company, you need anywhere from two to $3 million for your initial seed round. And in the original regulations for Reg CF, you couldn't get up to two or $3 million. You were stuck at a million dollars and still needed to go get accredited investors, even if you could get the full million dollars. Now, with these regulations, you don't necessarily need accredited investors. You can be purely through Reg CF, which is quite convenient. Number two, which I brought up as an issue for what the original regulations were for Reg CF in 2016, is that you can now create SPVs or special purpose vehicles within Reg CF. That means you can take your entire pool of investors, consolidate them, them down into one line on your cap table, and that's really significant. So instead of having, when you wanna like exit your business or sell it or raise even more money, you don't need everyone's signatures. You only need the one, whoever's the manager of that SPV. And we fund our terms, that means a lead investor. So. That makes your life a lot easier and the cap table so much cleaner. And that's really similar to Reg D if you've ever raised through a regulation D fundraising round. The third one, which I know I was bagging on accredited investors a little bit earlier about how they, you know, the rich get richer. And this might help that a little bit. However, what the, uh, the third bigger issue or reason is that accredited investors no longer have a cap to be part of Reg CF. Originally, they had a cap of how much they can participate in Reg CF rounds, and that cap is now eliminated. Now, you might be thinking, well, doesn't that help the rich get richer? Yes, it could. However, it's really important to still keep accredited investors around and part of Reg CF 
for future rounds, but also they can be a great jump start into these Rack CF rounds. It's a lot easier if your fund if you kick off your fundraise with a four investors at twenty five k twenty five thousand dollar checks and a hundred k right off the bat of your fundraising round because just like any crowdfund, if you can get that you know that first thirty percent in your first three days, that goes a really significant way for you to have a successful fundraise. So if you can get big checks originally and have them go through the Rex CF portal. That's huge for convincing other investors to invest and be part of your fundraise. With all those amendments from the SEC back in March 2021, RAGCF has taken off like a rocket ship in the last year or so now. There's been tons more fundraising going through RAGCF, and I think with time and also this new SBV model that RAGCF can use, VCs are much more comfortable with RegCF and now pretty used to it. And even a lot of accredited investors will invest through a RegCF because they have maybe the same rights or they can negotiate those through a RegCF portal. So these amendments have been huge for RegCF and it's a really big positive shift for RegCF moving into the future. Speaking of the future of RegCF, it seems like it's really, really bright. One, the amount of money going through RecCF has been unprecedented and it has been growing and growing like crazy, especially in this past year since the new amendments from the SEC. Also, a lot more people are getting much more comfortable with it from accredited investors, unaccredited investors, and the VCs, and also the founders are much more getting used to it. It's becoming more common language for equity crowdfunding in RecCF, and that's only a benefit to everyone because if more people are going through these equity crowdfunding portals, that drives more investors and makes investors much more accessible, especially for those that don't have the network connected to accredited investors. The next thing that will probably be a common discussion for what's needed in equity crowdfunding will be a secondary market. Because right now, if you buy shares through a WeFunder or Start Engine, those shares aren't, you can't sell them or transfer them to someone else until the company either gets acquired, IPOs, or you're gonna, not gonna get money back until they do a profit sharing or something like that. You can't just transfer them. So I think a secondary market will come, but it's gonna be a little while. And if you've kind of noticed throughout this video, the SEC and Congress can be a little bit slow. So we have at least a few years before we have any type of secondary market within Reg CF. With all of that, if you're a founder considering equity crowdfunding, I highly recommend talking to the different equity crowdfunding portals that are out there. So that's WeFunder, it's Republic, it's Start Engine. Talk to them and see what they can offer and see what's out there and see if it's a right fit for you. Now, if you, again, if you're a B2C business, it might make more sense compared to a B2B business because let's face it, a lot of B2B businesses are better suited for Reg D, especially because those Reg D investors or accredited investors, a lot of them made their money in enterprise sales. And if you're B2B, that's really helpful because one, there's a check size that's bigger and two, they can maybe connect you to different customers to grow your business. Now, if you're wondering which portal that I personally prefer, I personally prefer WeFunder typically because one, I love their team, I love the way they approach things, and two, they also have the highest volume of deals that they've had, and they were one of the first portals out there for Reg CF. So, highly recommend checking them out. You can check them out, more information about them in a podcast I recorded down in the links below, and also you can check them out at WeFunder.com. Come.